Now, to answer that question, really, about whether or not, if you spend over £100 a week, you should have to demonstrate you can afford it, I'm joined by Jason Reed from Young Voices UK, and that's a uh, non-profit talent, in, talent agency working with a new generation of political commentators. This is his first time. He's got a strong opinion uh, about this. Um, Jason, uh, help us out. I mean, is this um, the nanny state gone mad or is it something I have to tell you uh, I'm concerned about, uh, Jason? I get a number of cases in my court where people have lost money, relationships have irrevocably broken down, people are unable to pay that money back. And there is a toxic family breakdown. And at the heart of it, the dark heart of it is one thing, gambling. I mean, why shouldn't shops who are taking all this money make sure that people can afford it? Well, the vast majority of people who gamble, I believe it's over 99% is the statistic, do so completely safely and healthily, aren't doing any harm to themselves or to anyone else. And so this kind of policy, this kind of sweeping measure to put all gamblers on some kind of dystopian government register is the definition of using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. And it's part of this, uh, this, what I find a very concerning onslaught of new nanny state policies we're seeing on uh, now the way to tackle obesity is we're going to ban advertising for unhealthy food and we're going to tax sugar and salt and we're mm -hmm. going to ban sales of cigarettes and e-cigarettes. The World Health Organization saying women of childbearing age shouldn't drink alcohol at all. Uh, it's this kind of mindset that the way to solve all problems mm -hmm. in society is just to have these centralized policy decisions where somebody else makes all your lifestyle choices for you and it never works and it's an unacceptable level of infringement mm -hmm. on people's everyday lives you know, well jason some, jason 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 some, some policies work and some don't i mean we know for example that um, banning smoking uh, inside pubs and inside uh, most places in fact nearly all places now um has stopped some people smoking or, or, or reduced it it's made it less socially uh, acceptable we know that that's true as well um when you reduce the amount of advertising uh, allowed um you might be right i've not looked at the statistics or checked them i'm always dubious when anyone quotes statistics at me there are lies damn lies statistics and lawyers who deploy them but the thing it seems to me is that um, if somebody's spending a hundred pounds a month, you know, I ask the question: What harm in law? What mischief does it do uh, uh, for somebody to say, "Look, don't worry, I've got a job, I can afford it." Um, that takes two seconds. But for the one person who can't afford it, that is about to lose his house, that's about to lose his marriage, that's in the middle of a serious level of debt, it, it might protect that person. So if there is a bit of intervention, what difference does it make? The way I see it, this isn't about protecting people at all. This is about control. This is about the public health lobby trying to get more and more control over our everyday lives. If you take the obesity example, mm -hmm. um, some people have eating disorders and that can be detrimental, obviously, for your physical and your mental health. But the way we deal with that, we don't ban burgers or we, and we certainly don't create some kind of register of mcdonald's customers to make sure you know or oh, you shouldn't order that you've already had too many burgers this week because it's none of the government's business the vast majority of gamblers do so safely and the problem with this is that you can apply it to absolutely anything alcohol for example the next logical step might be let's confront alcoholism by making it so that the barman has to do a breathalyzer test on you before you're allowed to order another pint. Well, actually, Jason, I'm going to stop you there for a second, because, um, as you know, a licensee does have obligations, legal obligations that you're no doubt aware of um, in a pub. They can't serve somebody if they believe that not only are they drunk, but they're going to create a social disorder in their licensed premises. You'll be aware of that. There, there are laws to protect people in circumstances where there are dangerous substances uh, uh, about. In this instance, some might say, being devil's advocate, that uh, gambling is a dangerous thing and it's blighted the lives of millions. And often, and this is one of the challenges you see, Jason, that um, that people that go into betting shops often, not always, um, simply don't have the money. Often they are spending uh, money that's designed and uh, guaranteed to them, some would say gifted to them by uh, the benefit system. Um, and instead of feeding their family or using the money for which you and me and lots of others designed that purpose for in the first place, they're using that benefit money on 
gambling. And that's what none of us want. That's not the point of how and why we pay our taxes. So why shouldn't the uh, government have an interest in that? And why shouldn't betting shops ensure that that's the case? Anything, any leisure activity at all can be dangerous when you take it to extremes, but this isn't the solution. Putting people on a register and uh, treating them as if they're offenders uh, and taking away all their privacy and having the government make the decision for them, that's not the solution to this. I think it goes way beyond any technicalities of any policy. This is a fundamental question about what kind of country we want to live in. I don't want to live in a country where the government decides what I can spend my money on and what I can't mm -hmm. spend my money on. You know, over the last 18 months, we've given up a lot of our freedoms uh, because we had a once in a generation pandemic. But the problem now is that it's we're edging towards this becoming a new normal, I think, that this is the solution to everything. This is the go-to is, oh, we'll just centralize more power, we'll tax that more, we'll ban that more, we'll take away more people's privacy. And with gambling, it's going even further than it is with other areas of the nanny state like alcohol or smoking or well jason obesity. i'm going to stop you there i i hear what you say uh, and you've made your point uh, uh, well as i say